Hi, my name is Dr. Mr. Khan. I specialize in dermatologic surgery, particularly in liposuction and how to fix liposuction defects. I'm in private practice in Manhattan. Today we're going to talk about smart lipo defects. We get a lot of inquiries from real self and through other media searches uh, from patients who are looking to fix smart lipo defects. So I decided to create a little video and to walk you through the case, one of, the, one of my patients that I treated for smart lipo defects, just to show you what the defects can look like and what the procedure is all about. Um, this is a lovely patient of ours who we treated more than a year ago. And she had smart lipo done by another facility about three or four years prior to coming in to see me. And her main concerns were that, as you can see from this photo, it may not project very well on the camera, but uh, we'll do the best we can to show the audience that there is a significant degree of indentation right above the belly button in the form of a, in the shape like that of a, of somewhat like a diamond. And then there are linear marks right over here. There are some more square shaped marks over here. And as you can see, she also has a lot of stretch marks. She got those after um, the birth of her child. And so she wanted to get rid of a little bit of a baby bump for which the doctor decided to do smart typo in order to create some skin tightening, but it left her with all of these defects. Now this deep indentation as per the patient was not only a problem cosmetically because it was so obvious, but also this little area over here was somewhat painful for her. And I want to bring this to the attention of the audience that sometimes smart lipo leaves behind scars that can get calcified over time. Once the calcification settles in, then those scars can become quite painful, and that's what our patient was also experiencing. So not only it was an aesthetic concern for her, but also it was a pain issue for her. So we decided to proceed with the correction of these defects. I also want to reiterate here that definitely understand that whenever there is a scar settled in as a result of a liposuction procedure, especially power-assisted systems like either laser-based or ultrasound-based or radiofrequency-based devices, once you have a scar settled in, it is very, very difficult to completely correct all the cases because scars can only be made better. They cannot be completely erased. As you will see in the case of this patient, that how the process was, how the procedure was done and what she had to go through. So we decided to obviously release some of these scars, which were very bound down and remove some of the calcified tissue that was holding it and kind of stuck down to the underlying muscles. Uh, we decided to release some of that, take some of the built up scar tissue and calcified tissue out. We decided to release some of these indentations as much to the best of our ability as we can. And then all of these indentations needed to be filled in with a little bit of a fat. Now she, as you can see, she's otherwise a very fit girl and not necessarily heavy where I could get a lot of fat to, in order to be able to fill up all these defects. So we prioritized. We said, okay, we are going to fill up the defects that are much more concerning to her. And the ones that are not as concerning to her, we may leave them alone because we don't have as much fat available in our patient's case. So we decided to go for correction of this huge defect over here and a little bit of a defect over here and some of the other smaller indentations on this side, we decided not to correct them. So I'm gonna show you how she looked like immediately after the surgery. This is how her procedure was, like after fixing all of this indentation and then trying to do a little bit of a laser treatment on the surface, and that's where the redness is coming from, to get rid of some of the scar tissue that was on the surface over here. A little bit of a laser treatment over here. We decided to not treat this because we, had, we didn't have enough fat in our patient's case. And this defect alone required about 100 cc's of compact fat to be able to fix. And then a lot of the defects over here, we were able to correct those. Now let's look at the photos side by side, just to give you an idea of how our patient did. So this is her before, our so-called after the smart lipo procedure, the defects the way they were, and this is how we were able to fix them. When we look at her from the side view profile, you can see that over here, it's almost like a square shaped area where the laser was done and you could pretty much 
demarcate exactly where the laser fiber uh, went in and then did all the underlying heating of the skin and then the skin texture changed. There is a discoloration over here and then also some bulges on the side gives you a little bit of a contour irregularity when you look at her from the side view profile and a little bit of a leftover fat over here. So we took some of this out as well just to kind of shape up her uh, waistline and to match it with her beautiful uh, back and the butter contour that she has. We wanted to retain that. So I just did a little bit of a contouring here. But as you can see that simply by releasing some of the scar tissue and filling in some of those defects, it was a, we were able to give her a nicer, straighter profile and as compared to her before photo and a little bit of a laser treatment on top to match the skin color and to get rid of some of the uh, surface changes. So that alone was able to help her. And immediately after you can see, there's very little swelling here, but a marked improvement. And this is her other side, which you can see that there was also a very well demarcated area over here where the laser was done and or smart lipo was done underneath the skin to try to tighten her and also to try to melt some of the fat but it left her a lot of irregularities and we were able to blend all of this in give her a straighter profile again doing a little bit of a contouring along the waistline to give her a beautiful curve and a shape that is just right for her body not too heavy not too small and this is the result immediately after and as you can see that over time it only gets a little bit better and better sometimes patients they have to come back and get a little bit additional fat grafting because not all the fat lasts forever uh, it some of it about like 80 percent of whatever body takes um, it stays but 20 percent of it almost 20 percent of it goes away at the end of the first year so sometimes i tell patients that just definitely follow up and make sure if you're starting to see a little bit of indentation coming back then we could always take a little bit of fat from other parts of the body and try to do a little more additional grafting and just in order to keep up the the results and this is uh, an optional sort of a thing and if a patient doesn't feel like that there is a need for it then it's not necessary that you have to do it but just keep in mind that sometimes a revision even after the revision surgery may be required so i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope this was informational for you uh, to watch the a little bit about how to fix um, smart lipo defect thank you